A faulty model rocket. A faulty model rocket moves in the XY plane. The positive Y direction is vertically upward. The rocket's acceleration has components a sub x of t equals alpha t square and a sub y of t equals beta minus gamma t, where alpha is 2.50 meters per second to the fourth power and beta is 9.00 meters per second square and gamma is 1.40 meters per second cube. At t equals to zero, the rocket is at the origin and has velocity v0 equals v0 x i hat plus v0 y j hat with v0 x 1.00 meters per second and v0 y 7.00 meters per second. Part A, calculate the velocity and position vectors as functions of time. Part B, what is the maximum height reached by this rocket? Part C, what is the horizontal displacement of the rocket when it returns to y equals uh, zero? Now, <clears throat> let's start with uh, noting that uh, we have acceleration x component a sub x equals uh, alpha t square acceleration y component a sub y equals beta minus gamma t uh, the velocity has an initial uh, the, uh, the rocket has an initial velocity v0 x i hat plus v0 y j hat and the position at t equals to zero is zero i hat plus zero j hat so it's the origin now let's start with part a uh, so the acceleration x component a sub x is related to the velocity x component dv sub x uh, dt uh, therefore, we can calculate the change in the velocity x component, delta v sub x, by uh, evaluating the integral from time t equals 0 to time t, a sub x, dt. And this would be integral from 0 to time t, alpha t square, which was a sub x, dt, so it is alpha t cube divided by 3. So that means the velocity x component at time t minus the initial x component of the velocity must be equal to alpha t cube uh, divided by 3. So this implies that the velocity x component uh, as a function of time t can be written as v0x plus alpha t cube divided by 3. Okay, on the other hand, so let's keep this uh, result in a box here. This is our x component of the velocity. On the other hand, we have the y component of the acceleration, a sub y, which is equal to uh, the rate of change of y component of velocity, dv sub y dt. And uh, that basically gives us, for the change in the y component of the velocity, an integral from 0 to t time t equals 0 to t a sub y dt and this would be the integral from time 0 to t a sub y was uh, given by beta minus gamma t so uh, this is beta minus gamma t dt so this integral becomes 
beta t minus gamma t squared divided by 2. So velocity y component at time t minus the initial velocity y component is equal to uh, beta t minus gamma t squared divided by 2. So we can write the y component of the velocity as a function of time as v0y plus beta t minus gamma t squared over 2. Okay, so let's keep this in a box as well. All right. So we can basically uh, substitute the values here and write velocity as a function of time. So velocity uh, at time t will be given by, uh, in given in terms of uh, the x component and the y component. So v of t is equal to uh, v sub x of t i hat plus v sub y of t j hat. Okay, so for uh, v sub x of t, we can substitute the values that we have found. v sub x of t is equal to v zero x. What was v zero x? v zero x was uh, one point zero zero meters per second. So uh, it is one point zero zero plus uh, alpha t cube over three. So it is uh, alpha was uh, two point five zero. So it's going to be uh, two point five zero t cube divided by three. Okay. And for v sub y of t, uh, we can also substitute what we have found. v sub y of t is equal to uh, the initial y component of the velocity. Uh, so we can look at the initial y component. It is 7.00 meters per second. So this would be equal to 7 uh, point zero zero plus uh, beta t what was beta uh, beta is nine gamma is 1.4 so it is uh, nine point zero zero t uh, and minus gamma t squared over two so it would be minus uh, one point four zero t squared over 2. So uh, we can basically uh, finally write our full velocity vector. Uh, then we can say that velocity vector at time t will be um one point zero zero plus two point five divided by three that gives us roughly zero point eight three three up to three significant figures uh t cube i hat and then we have plus 7.00 0 
plus 9.00t minus 1.4 divided by 2 becomes 0.7 so minus 0.70t square j hat So uh, this is basically our answer for the full uh, velocity vector at time t. That's how we can uh, calculate it. Okay, and this is related to position. So this is basically the rate of change of position vector dr dt. So uh, we can calculate the displacement, the change in the position vector, delta r, as a function of time, by uh, calculating this integral from 0 to t, uh, v of t dt. And that would be the integral from uh, 0 to t, 1.5. Zero, 0 plus 2.50 divided by uh, 3 t cube i hat and then plus 7.00 plus 9.00 t minus 0.7 uh, t square j hat dt and this would give us uh, the position as a function of time minus uh, the zero vector because the initial position uh, was the origin okay <clears throat> so um, we can perform this integral to find the position vector r as a function of time t uh, as the integral of 1.00 dt will give us 1.00t. The second term, 2.50 over 3t cube, will become 2.50t uh, to 4 divided by 12 i hat. And then we have um, 7.00 t plus 9.00 t becomes 9.00 t squared over 2. And then the last term, uh, minus 0.7 t squared becomes minus 0.7 t cube over three j hat okay so <clears throat> if we calculate uh, these values up to three significant figures we can finally uh, write our answer for the position vector as a function of time as 1.00 t plus 0 0.208 t to the fourth power i hat plus 7.00t plus 4.50t square minus 0.233t cube parentheses j hat. Okay, so this would be our final answer for the position vector as a function of time. Uh, let's move on to part B. Now we know velocity as a function of time and position as a function of time. What is the maximum height reached by the rocket? Well, to calculate the maximum height, I need to concentrate on the y component of the position vector. So y as a function of uh, t is basically 7.00t uh, 
plus a 4.50 t square minus 0 0.233 t cube and what happens at the maximum position at y equals uh, y max I will have dy dt equals to zero because it's an extremum point so dy dt which is basically uh, the y component of the velocity vy of t um, and if I look at vy of t it's basically <clears throat> Uh, here 7 plus 90 minus 0.70 square so it is 7.00 plus 9.00 t minus 0 0.70 t square and this must be equal to 0 it's a quadratic equation uh, and if I look for a solution here t is equal to uh, minus b which is minus 9 uh, plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac b square is 81 square uh, plus 4 times uh, ac would be uh, uh, minus 0.7 times 7 so it is uh, 7 times 0.7 b square minus 4ac divided by min, uh, divided by 2a where a is uh, minus 0 0.7 so it is minus 1.4 so this gives me minus 9 plus or uh, minus square root of 106 divided by uh, minus 1.4 uh, so the question is should I take the positive root or the negative root here so if I multiply this by minus 1 this will become 9 uh, minus or plus uh, square root 106 divided by uh, 1.4 and the answer is I shouldn't take the negative root because if I take the negative root it will be 9 minus square root of 106 which is uh, 106 is greater than 81 so it, it's greater than 9 uh, square root of 106 is greater than 9 so time would be negative here so physically the time has to be positive so uh, I shouldn't take the negative root therefore I take the positive root so my uh, the proper uh, root I should be considering here is the positive root which is 9 plus uh, square root uh, 106 divided by 1.4 and that is roughly if you calculate this it's roughly 13.8 seconds okay so uh, in order to find the maximum height reached I have to substitute this time into uh, this expression y of t so y max I can find by evaluating y at this time y max will be uh, 7.00 times 13.8 uh, plus 4.50 t squared so it will be 4.50 uh, 
13.8 parentheses squared. and minus 0 0.233 13.8 cube and if you calculate this the final answer for the maximum height turns out to be 341 meters. Okay, <clears throat> let's move on to uh, part C. Now, uh, part C is asking me the horizontal displacement of the rocket when it returns to y equals zero. So first of all, I have to find when it returns to uh, y equals zero. So for part C, I have to find the time y of t is equal to uh, 0 basically gives me, because I know y of t is 70 plus 4.5 t square and minus 0.233 t cube. So it is t times uh, 7 plus uh, 4.50 t uh, minus 0 0.233 t square. So I have taken this into t parentheses. This is equal to zero. Obviously, this has one solution that is trivial. t is equal to zero. That's the initial position. Okay. And if I look for the other solution, then I have to solve this quadratic equation again. And for that, I find minus b, which is minus 4.50 plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac that is 4.50 square plus 4 times uh, 7 times 0.233 and that gives me uh, and I have to divide this by 2a which is uh, minus 0 0.466 so this gives me a number uh, of 20.7 uh, uh, seconds so I want to know the horizontal displacement at this point now I look at my r of t here is the x part 1t plus 0 0.28 208 t to the fourth power so I evaluate uh, the position x component at time t is equal to 20.7 uh, seconds so that becomes uh, 1.00 t uh, plus 2.50 over 12 t to the 4 that's basically my uh, answer here uh, and uh, this has to be evaluated at t is equal to uh, 20.7 seconds and the answer turns out to be 3.85 times 10 to the 4 meters and this is basically expressed with three significant uh, figures <clears throat> okay now, to summarize what we did here, uh, we have a faulty model rocket that's moving in the xy plane. Uh, the y component and x component of acceleration is given in terms of these constants alpha, beta, and gamma, alpha t square and beta minus gamma t for the y component. Uh, and at t equals to zero, the rocket is at the origin. It has an initial velocity, Vox and Voy values are given. We want to calculate velocity and position, uh, maximum height reach and horizontal displacement when it returns to y equals to zero. So <clears throat> we have uh, looked at the relationship between acceleration and velocity. 
and uh, basically we find the x component of velocity as a function of time by taking the integral from 0 to t ax dt uh, because we have an initial velocity component v0x here vx is v0x plus uh, alpha t cube over 3 and for the y component we do the same thing and we also have an initial y component v0y so we can finally write v of t as vx of t i hat plus vy of t j hat. So by substituting the numbers here, this is the final answer we get. And if we take an integral of this velocity vector from 0 to t, we will find the displacement delta r from time t equals 0 to time t. Because at time t equals to 0, we were at the origin. This directly gives us r of t. And then we look at the displacement on the x-axis and displacement on the y-axis. The displacement on the y-axis reaches a maximum value uh, when the derivative dy dt is zero. That's an extremum point, so that's when the velocity y component is zero. We solve this quadratic equation for time. Uh, to, to see when it happens. It happens at 13.8 seconds and we substitute this time into our <clears throat> displacement on the y-axis to find the maximum displacement. It turns out to be 341 meters. Then we want to know when it returns to its original uh, position on the y-axis. So it, t equals to 0 is where we started. The other solution is basically uh, t is equal to 20.7 seconds. So we, we don't take the negative root here again uh, because time has to be positive. Because t has to be positive, we take the positive root. And we evaluate the uh, position vector x component at this time, uh, 20.7 seconds, and we find that uh, when it returns to its original position on the y-axis, it has made a displacement on the x-axis of 3.85 times 10 to 4 meters.